So today we'll be talking about COVID-19 and diabetes. Let's take a minute to talk a little bit about COVID-19. And where it mainly targets is the lungs of a person, or in some cases it can be within the nasal cavities. And that's where a person will start to lose um, their sense of smell, sense of taste, difficulty breathing when a lot of the vi viral particles are located within the lungs. Other symptoms include fever, fatigue, headaches, and a cough. So with the virus itself, it's mainly targeting different cells within the body. And so when we talk about COVID-19 and diabetes, first we have to take a step back and review a little bit about diabetes. So with diabetes, we understand that there are a bit of complications going on and I will talk about three organs today. So right here we have the liver and then right beneath the liver we have the stomach and then the stomach connects to the intestines and then right behind the stomach we have the pancreas. So whenever a person eats whatever food they're eating or whatever drinks they have it will travel down through the esophagus and enter into the stomach. Now, within the stomach, different acids and muscles break down the food and make it into smaller pieces just so that it's able to travel through the intestines. Now, within the intestines, major nutrients such as carbohydrates, protein, or fats are absorbed into the bloodstream. When that is happening, insulin, which is a hormone, is released from the pancreas. And we can think of insulin as a bit of a hall monitor. What it does is it helps to balance out blood sugar within a person's body. Now, in some situations or perhaps uh, a stressful event, the body will rely on the liver and from the liver, a lot of blood sugar, fats, and other vital nutrients will be released into the bloodstream and this is just as a, you can think of it as a survival mechanism. So basically the liver is gonna be the backup generator to make sure that a lot of the body cells within the body have the energy to keep carrying out their daily processes. So with type one diabetes, we understand that the pancreas itself is releasing little to no insulin into the body. And so what happens is that blood sugar from food that's being eaten, or if it's released from the liver, is not able to be balanced. So either it stays in the bloodstream or it gets, uh, it leaves the body through the kidneys. Now for type two diabetes, little or no insulin is produced similar to type one. And there's another thing called insulin resistance. And that's when the body cells in the body are unable to use the insulin that's naturally produced by the pancreas. And so this is where a lot of diabetes medication will come into play. And a lot of that is just to help a person, their organs remain normal and to be able to carry out their, their daily functions. And so when we talk about blood sugar being released into the body and if it's not balanced, it can build up over time. And when this happens, it causes hyperglycemia or high blood sugar. High blood sugar is measured at over 250 milligrams per deciliter. And with people who are diagnosed with diabetes, um, sometimes their blood sugar will be beyond that and that's when a lot of medication will be prescribed like insulin or metformin and because what we understand is that for high blood sugar it affects many many different parts of the body for example with a lot of people that suffer from diabetes they will start to have issues with their eyes for some it might be like blurry vision and when that happens is because too much of the blood sugar is in that blood vessel that allows the eye to see. And when that happens, it makes it difficult for that person 
um, to be able to see normally. In some other cases, high blood sugar can affect different parts of the body, maybe the kidney, because your kidneys are responsible for filtering blood and maintaining a little bit of the nutrients. And if there's an overwhelming amount of blood sugar, it can put a lot of stress on the kidneys, which can damage those little filters inside the kidney, which leads to sugar or maybe protein or albumin found within the urine. So those is what we know so far with um, high blood sugar. And we know that whenever a person experiences a stressful event, perhaps they get sick or maybe they encounter a stressful situation in life. And if you haven't heard of this one instinct called the fight, flight, or freeze instinct, where someone gets really energized or maybe they freeze up whenever they encounter a stressful situation, that is what's happening within the body whenever a person gets infected with the virus or any other illness. So what happens is that the liver will be stimulated, releasing large amounts of blood glucose or blood sugar into the bloodstream. And that's just a way to get a lot of the different body cells prepared to handle any sort of stressful event. So in the case of COVID-19, a recent uh, research article found that many people who were coming, uh, becoming hospitalized were suffering severe symptoms of COVID-19. And we know that with these people that were coming to the hospital, they measured their blood sugar levels and it was beyond 250 milligrams. And what they are believing is that COVID-19, like any other um, stressful event, causes the body to fight back against it by releasing a lot of blood sugar just to make sure like a lot of the body cells are prepared to respond to that virus. And we know that whenever the blood sugar gets too high and if it's not decrease um, in time, it can cause a lot of issues with different organs. So that's why people with diabetes are at higher risk for severe symptoms from COVID-19. However, we must also take this with a little bit of a grain of salt because there are other factors that are influenced this um, severe onset of symptoms, such as a history of hypertension or high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, uh, chronic kidney disease, obesity, or any inflammatory disease like arthritis. And also, you know, some characteristics, characteristics of people could be like, they're perhaps at an older age, perhaps they are biologically male, or they come from a minority. So we have to consider a lot of these factors when we start this discussion about COVID-19 and diabetes. But in, from that, we just know that it still is under review because this is still a disease that um, is still affecting many people across the US and across the globe. And the more research that we know, the better we can help prevent these hospitalizations for people with diabetes. And one thing that they suggest is that a person with diabetes who becomes infected should monitor their blood sugar before being admitted into the hospital just so that they are able to manage the chronic condition with diabetes as well as be better able to fight off the virus while in the hospital. Uh, once again, thank you for your time and enjoy your day.